In this activity, we're going to learn how to create a dimensioned multi-view drawing in Autodesk Inventor. Before we can start, you need to save and open two files from Edmodo. The first file is dimensioning1.ipt. The second file is our drawing template that looks like a sheet of paper with a border around the outside edge and a title block at the bottom right. Once you have both files open, we can start. To start placing our views for our multi-view drawing, we have to start with a base view. So we'll go up to the top left of the screen and click Base. A window pops up that will allow us to select what object we want to put the base view for. If you have more than one object open in Inventor, there will be more than one listed here. Make sure yours says dimensioning1.ipt. We want to start with the front view, so front is highlighted. If this looks good, click OK. Right now, it placed the front view in sort of a strange spot. That's all right, we can fix that in a couple of minutes. Right now, we can also place our top, side, and isometric views. To do that, we'll make sure that the mouse goes straight up from our front view, and we'll click once to sort of place a placeholder here for where our top view will be. We'll go back down to the front and mouse to the right, click once, and now there's a little placeholder for where the right side view will be. We'll put down one more view, sort of in the top right corner, click once, that's where our isometric view will be. When you have these three rectangles showing where your views will be, right click and click create. To fix where these views are placed, you can sort of hover over and see that there's a red border that pops up. Click and hold your mouse button on the border and just sort of drag your views so that they fit a little better on the screen. And it might take you a minute to get them right where you'd like them. Notice how the views will stay lined up perfectly. When you're happy with where they are, let's shade this isometric view like this. How we'll do that is we're going to double click on that red border. Down here you'll see a button that if you hover over it, it says shaded. Right now it's at hidden line removed, it's just sort of this sort of white with the black outline. If we click on shaded, click OK, that'll get us this nice shaded isometric view. Once our views are set up the way we'd like them to be, we have to start thinking about dimensioning them. To dimension them, it's not about putting on as many dimensions as possible and filling up the screen with numbers, because that's going to be pretty tough to read. The idea is making sure you have enough information for someone to make that object. So, to start, go up to the top left, find the Annotate tab, click it, and your menu options change. Over on the far left is our dimension button, which is going to work pretty similar to the dimension button in the rest of Inventor that you've been using so far. It's a little different in that we're going to try to use endpoints of lines instead of just clicking on an entire line, and you'll see that in a second. The first thing that I think that someone would need to know to make this part is how long this part is. So, I'm going to show that by clicking on the endpoint of this line and the endpoint of this line. And you'll see that that dimension will follow my mouse just like in the inventor dimensioning that you've done before. I'm going to go up a little bit, give it some space, click, and you see a box shows up where I could put in different options and things. Right now, we don't need that. 
we can uncheck Edit Dimension when created and click OK. What else would we need to know? Well, we've talked about how long this side is. We also probably need to say how tall it is. So, I'll click the end point. I'll click the other end point and bring that out. Click to place it. As you go through, you can probably start thinking about what other information do I need? So you need to know how tall the entire thing is. Click the bottom, click the top, place your dimension where you want it. You can continue working through placing dimensions for all of the important information that you would need to know. Once you're done dimensioning, it should look something like this. You can check if you're finished by taking a look at the 3D object and trying to see if you could make that object based on what you have there. So if I wonder how long this is, I can look at it and see 2 inches. You have that, so you're set. How tall is this part? Half an inch. You have that dimension, so that's good. How tall is the entire shape? One inch. You have that. As you go through, make sure that everything that you'd have to make has a dimension so that you know where it is and you know how big it is. This circle might be the trickiest part. It has a diameter of 0.75 inches. We also know that it's 0.5 inches from this edge and 0.5 inches in from that edge. When your whole drawing is finished, we have one last step. And that's to add your name into the title block down here. To do that, over on the left in the browser, find where it says ANSI A and click on the plus sign next to it. If you're still in the dimension tool, it's not going to let you click it. So you'll have to right click, say done, or hit the escape key on your keyboard, and then click the plus sign next to ANSI A. If you double click on field text, a whole bunch of information should show up in a window. To edit it, you have to click this little button here, Eye Properties. Go to the Summary tab, and where it says Author and Your Name, you can put in your name. When you're finished, click OK. Click OK one more time, and you should see that your name shows up here under who it's drawn by. When you're totally finished with this project, make sure you go up to iPro, save it, and turn it into Mianid Moto.